What led to the 2017 diagnosis with anxiety disorder? I had episodes before, weird sensations. A lot of them were vomiting and I would get hospitalized and I would be fine. Even when I was little with asthma, when my asthma got really bad, oftentimes I wasn't even taken to the hospital to stay because of only my asthma, but it was because I couldn't stop vomiting. And I would get so weak that they would decide to put me on IV for food. Mm -hmm. So I always had that kind of reaction that nobody really could call what it was. And I'm a little upset I, d I wasn't diagnosed for a long time. Like, I feel like I failed myself in a way for that. I had a lot of therapy, I always had doctors around me, and nobody ever really raised the flag. And so it was never diagnosed. And then in 2017, March of 2017, I had a training camp uh, in Rio with Seb and our trainer, and I peaked. It was like, wow, Maya is back. And it was like really incredible, but it was really hard on my body too. And there was something about my mental health there that I wasn't quite figuring out. I had in that same month, a really big swell here in, in the beginning of March. And I couldn't surf because I had such extreme nightmares. Me and Seb were still together and the bed was wet in the morning and I had to call it off. I started getting sick, normal sick, like immune system. Okay, I'm like, I have a cold or something. And I used to get paranoid about getting sick. Maybe all the athletes are like that, but what athlete wants to peak and then get sick for 10 days? So I started probably mentally just killing myself. And I'll never forget Sunday, I'm sick, huh? I have a cold, my mom comes in, we're supposed to go see a movie. She looks at me and she's like, what? Like, you're not gonna go to the movies. You do not look good. And I was like, no, 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 I wanna go see the movie, I wanna go see the movie. So we go see the movie. Three minutes in, I sprint out of that cinema into the toilet and I start throwing up. And mom is like, let's go to the hospital, let's go to the So we go, they put me on IV. And I don't get better. And at some point, my mom is so desperate that I remember her saying, just make her sleep. Just like shut this girl down. And they did that with anxiety medicine through the vein. So I slept and next day I woke up. You're fine, you can go home. So what did I have? We don't know. I'm like, okay, let's go home mom. And we go home and that week I start going back to training. I'm back to training and I cannot train right. Like I was so dizzy, I was so confused in my head. And so I started looking for doctors and answers. And at some point I'm home and my auntie comes and we start watching a, kind of like a suspense movie. And I start feeling so, so weird and ill and agitated and, uh, with anxiety. And I'm like, turn off the TV. And she's like, well, I have something here. Do you want to try? I was like, well, what do you have? Well, try. And I tried and I felt better. And I was like, what is this medicine for? And they're like, anxiety. And I'm like, mm, okay. And so I went into the psychiatrist and I told him and explained it to him. And that's when I got diagnosed and we started finding medicine that would rebalance those um, chemics that probably got mixed up in my brain. I think the anxiety just shows um, makes her maybe sp stay w with herself a lot. She won't go in large crowds, she, she won't go out partying, she won't go to, to restaurants. Like, it really doesn't show in when it counts. If there's big waves or she has a job to do it, she, when she should have the most anxiety, she kind of deals with it. Now she has the dogs who help a lot. A couple uh, items I want you to elaborate on. The, the big yawns that you'll do. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> They're the weirdest thing ever. It's like something is inside me and I just have to yawn so hard. Who told you that, Steph? Uh -huh. Poor f <laughs> <laughs> The whole week of my first world record, I was just yawning. <laughs> she said it has something to do with oxygen. Yeah, it's like when you, when you have anxiety and you have like this pressure, what do you want to do? You want to like excel. 
And so I had those two things, like you'd often see me doing this, you know, or you'd see me a lot. Like, I don't know, I just got something out of me. Yeah. It was inside, it was, um, I don't have it anymore, thank God. Oh, that's anxiety? All right, well then, <laughs> yeah, there's a, a lot of big yawns. If that's the way she deals with it, I, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, she has anxiety in the water as well. Ooh, what about driving on the wrong side of the road? Yeah, that was one time, that was terrible. Well, then, you know, I had some episodes of just a very quick, and just a few times, really, very quick memory loss. Very, very sharp, like, doom, and I would be lost. I had just surfed, and I got on the road, and I could not figure out on what side to drive. So a car came, ah, ah, and and all those things kind of scared me. And that's why I remember them so well. Your mom says you're still not fully recovered to this day yeah. from the anxiety. Like, how will it come out in you now? To be honest, it's pretty controlled. I had some problems uh, when I tried to really stop the medicine. Mm -hmm. And that's when, um, then I have this very similar symptoms. I think for my mom and my dad, it's really important for me to get off the medicine. For me, it's not a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. You know, if I need it for life, I take a very low dose. I keep myself on a very low dose and I talk to doctors about it and they tend to say that a lot of people stay on it forever. So I don't, I don't want to make it a deal breaker for me.